to set us free from our fears and some things that maybe we might practice or think that, that will bring us down. And you want to remove all of those strongholds and, and bring us totally into light where we can be free to worship you and praise you and to love you and to be free from all the condemnation and the guilt that comes along with doing wrong and thinking wrong and acting wrong and speaking wrong. And we're learning that, Father, and the revelation is coming in. And, and there's a great deliverance there that happens when that light is turned on. Lord, we love the light. We want the light. And we want to thank you for it, Lord. And we can see clearly. And we thank you, Lord, as the light comes on tonight. We'll give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's go with it. The first scripture, first scripture that I want to turn to uh, is in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. And uh, I want us to uh, see something that is so important. What will happen in, 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 in your life as you, as you move along in God and God does the work in you? You learn to be open. You learn that you can't hide from God. Now, what I'm sharing here tonight, and I pray that the, the spirit of wisdom and revelation will rest upon us all because, because Susan and me, we, what we do, we stand before God like this in our home, and we say, Lord, we're open. Thou knoweth all things anyway, Lord. We don't desire to hide anything. We're open, Father. Purify us, glorify us, sanctify us for thy use, Lord. Let me understand what I'm saying. See, being honest with God, but you've got to come to that place where you know that God is for you. If you think he's after you, you're going to run from him. You're going to lie. You think, well, I, I, uh, you know, I'll hide this from God. Well, look what it says. And not, and not a creature exists. That's us, creatures that is concealed from his sight. But all things are open and exposed and naked and defenseless to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. We have to do. We have to reckon with God. If, if you will learn that tonight, there'll be an honesty that, that begins to flow out of you to God. God will see that honesty in your heart and even though you know you have a lot of things you'd like that you are hiding from God, you think you are, or I think, no, we're not. Just be open, because he sees it anyway, and he loves you. Just think while we were lost. Remember when we were lost? When did he die for us? When we were good? When we were lost and in sin. How many understand, I get a little revelation from that verse of Scripture, what I'm saying tonight. I, I want to move every one of us in that direction because you will see growth in your life. You're not going to shock God when you fail. He already knew you was going to fail before you failed. He knows everything. So there's no need to stay in the closet. We are open to him. He sees everything. But you see, we've got to come to that understanding to be willing to, to not try to hide, which how foolish we are if we do. Because we try, we try to hide. I'm talking about we, mankind, all of us in some degree. But I want you to experience something tonight. I want you in your own heart tonight say, I'm open, Lord. I'm, I can't hide anything. You, I, you see everything, Lord. And you still love me. <laughs> I'm still your son. See, that, when that truth comes in, you'll be free. You'll get yourself set free. So don't try to hide anything. Not to God. For he sees it anyway, and he loves you. Right where you're at. See, I've lived long enough. See, if I haven't come to some level of, of victory in my life, the rest of you don't stand a chance. I'm almost 85 years old. I've been through every contract machine God has. And some of them I've gone through twice. <laughs> I 
What I'm saying is be honest with yourself and with God and say, Lord, I see, I see. See, well, that's what the Scripture says. Uh, I want you to turn, put um, 1 John um, 1 John 1, 8 up there. 1 John 1, 8. I want to show you a little revelation here tonight now. If we say we have no sin, refusing to admit that we are sinners, we delude and lead ourselves astray, and the truth which the gospel presents is not in us, does not dwell in our hearts. So here's what I'm saying. Here's what that means. If you know that you got sin in your heart and you're not confessing it to God, you're deluding yourself and you're in deception, or I'm in deception. But then that next verse comes in. Here's what God says I want you to do. Verse 9. If we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins, dismiss our lawlessness, and continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness, everything not in conformity to his will in purpose, thought, and action. Very simple, not complicated. If you have sin, admit it. Confess it. And what will he do? Cleanse you. And you walk in that light. That's walking in the light. When you walk in the light, if you do something wrong, you, you, you admit it. You say, yeah, Lord, I'm, I'm falling short on that. I, I, yes, Lord, I can see this. I can see that. Because you can't hide it. He sees it anyway. But what I'm saying is that if you understand what I'm trying to say, the revelation is that you're willing to just be exposed. I'm willing to be exposed to all of you. I have nothing to hide to any of you. Am I perfect? No, I'm far from perfect. Talk to Susan. Because I'm going to tell you what she said. Oh, he's the best. <laughs> best husband you'll find on this side of this city. <laughs> but are you open? Are you open to God? Or do we think, are we so deluded that we think we can hide from, you can't remember the scripture, Hebrews, what, 4, what, 13. Boy, what a relationship we can have. See, you, you, you will just, when you, when you know you're open and exposed and, and you know it's his grace and his mercy and it's his loving kindness. It's what he did for me at Calvary. It's him all the way. You're free. You say, Brother Bob, you know, I see this about you. I bow. I humble myself. Thank you, brother, for correcting me. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Be willing to take correction. Because we'll never get where we want to go if we hang on to these particular things that we need to be corrected along the way. See, the, see what, what uh, Rick is seeing? This thing is real. Though Bob Tilton has a humor, he preaches by humor and through humor, but the point is true. The word is true. You want to be set free? Go ahead. You'll be free right now. Just like you are. Just like you are, Lord, here I am. Open. Because he sees it anyway. But see, you've got to come to that place to open, to know that you're open. How many of you understand what I'm trying to touch, teach you tonight? You must understand that. Well, I, I have been a little short here. I've been, I live here. And I've been, yeah, God knows it. God knows it. God, but he still loves you. You're still born again. You're still his child. He's giving you the Holy Spirit to correct you, to direct you, to empower you. You're open. You have nothing to hide. Susan don't hide anything from me, and I don't hide anything from her. Well, the other day she did hide that pound cake. <laughs> I, I just kidding. I, just, <laughs> I saw Miss Campbell there. I thought about her pound cake she gave. I said, any more of that pound cake? <clears throat> I know she wouldn't hide it from me. 
All right, that ain't what I want to teach, but I, that's a little extra sermon on the side. Okay, you got it? How many people are you open? See, you want to be free? Just be open. Just be open. Here I am, bald headed and all. That's powerful. Okay. Let's get into the word of the Lord now. I want you to turn to St. John 3. That's in the Bible, by the way. <laughs> I want to start with verse 315. I want to edify you tonight, encourage you tonight. And listen to what the scripture says. In order that everyone who believes in him. Now, one thing I like about the Amplified is in order that everyone who believes in him. Now, this is what believing in him really means. Who clean, cleaves to him, trust him, and rely on him. That's what believe means. It's not like the devils believe that God exists. But the believing that comes, that God is talking about, is the believing that you trust in Him. You rely on Him. You have faith in Him. You put your whole weight upon Him. That's the believing. That's what the Amplified tells you there. That's what, all, that's what believing is right there. Trust, rely, and believe in Him. Hold on to Him. Cleave to Him. Cleave to His Word. Hold on to His Word. Lean on his word. Trust his word. Trust him. Okay? May not perish, but have eternal life and actually live forever. That means you'll never die. You will never see the grave. Never. The Bible says he annulled, he annulled death. We will live forever and ever, forever and ever. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life right now when you believe. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Boy, that's powerful. The next time the devil comes up and threatens you, you're going to die, just laugh at him and say, devil, you're going to spend a long time in hell. Because he was whipped at Calvary. So, look what it says. That, just, just that, and as you meditate on that scripture, as you read that, and, and just look at that, eternal life, eternal life. And then look at the, look at the, the actual thing there. Actually live forever. That's what eternal life is. Wow. That's what our Lord has done for us. All right, now we're going to turn the page and read a little bit more. John 3, 16. Oh, I never get tired of uh, speaking this one. John 3, 16. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world. Put your name in there. I'm going to put my name in there. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized Bob. You. He ain't talking about this world, this big globe here. No, he's talking about the people of the world, you and me. That he even gave up his only begotten, unique son. You know, things, things that you have to repent. Now, I had to repent because it was hard for me to love myself. Anybody here? And when I realized, wait a minute, God loves me. Uh, if God loves me, who am I not to love myself? I should love what he loves. Ooh. Are you out there, church? Are you loving what he loves? He loves you. Now, we're not talking about a carnal, selfish, greedy, self-type of love. We're talking about the love of God, the agape love. I love myself with the agape love. 
you let that become revelation to you, you'll rise to, to higher levels in God like you've never seen before. Quit putting yourself down. Now, here's the way it works. You're doing pretty good. You got a good day. You do something wrong, and you feel bad all day about yourself. The devil comes along, puts condemnation and guilt on you, and so you'll rebuke the devil for about three days. And finally, you, you, you get into the scriptures and, or the scripture sheets and you build yourself back up again. Stop putting yourself down. I'm good looking. I said I'm good looking. You asked Susan back there. <laughs> the other day I looked in the mirror and I hollered, oh, that's me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but if God loves me, if God loves you, you know, when you minister to the people, you, you, you gain so much revelation knowledge. One time, this was years ago, Susan Mee was ministering to this just beautiful woman. She, I mean, a beautiful girl. She was about 26 years old. She was absolutely beautiful, you know. And I said, well, what is your problem? She says, I'm ugly. Took my glasses off, cleaned them, put them back on. <laughs> <laughs> See, so as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What is pretty anyway? What is pretty to you might be ugly to somebody else and vice versa. I got news for you. Excuse me. Oh, that's just I'm sorry. I got news for you. God has no ugly children. We're all made in his image. Because when you say you're ugly... Oh, that's a slant against God. Oh, see, we don't think along those lines, do we? No, you're created in the image of God. Man and female. You're good looking. You're pretty. Now, once that gets inside of you, that's when the let the good times roll. <laughs> That's what I tell Sue. When, you know, when Susan and me there in the house, time, we have a great time. The kids are all gone. They're married. And we just do, do, do. Ah, <laughs> uh, y'all, some of you ain't there yet, but you know. <laughs> but see, it's, it's all clean fun. It's, it's, it's life. It's, it's wonderful. We are one. When you get married, you're one. Amen. When she first got married, she tried to hide from me. I, I said, come on, honey, don't try to hide it from me. <laughs> We won, baby. We all got grown up in here, so I can speak it. You, 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 girl, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Come back in here. Quit hiding in the other room. Come on out. Get out of that closet right now. Because, <laughs> see, you, you are one. And now we've been married for 64 years, come the 28th of this month. Watch it, Bob. You can go too far with this. <laughs> Oh, we have a great time together now, I tell you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, some of you getting red in the face there now. <clears throat> but see, that's holy. The bed is undefiled in God. See, the bed is undefiled in God. It's wonderful. Two people become one in thought and heart and love and compassion. There's a song that, that, that when, we, when I first met Susan and, and I would sing and, and I, the, the love that I felt for her when I first saw her. And God spoke to me and I wasn't even a Christian. said, so that's going to be your wife. Well, 64 years later, that's right. Been my wife for 64 and we're not tired of one another yet. I cannot get enough of that girl. I love to be with that girl. I love her personality, the way she smiles. She, I mean, she's positive. She loves God. She prays. And sometimes I, I fall asleep and then wake up later on. She's still praying. 
That's the most praying girl I ever saw. No wonder I got victory all the time when you got a wife like that that prays for you. <laughs> all right, let's move, let's move on before I get in trouble here. Now, for God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world, that is you and me, that he even gave up his only begotten unique son so that whoever believes in, trusts in, clings to, relies on him, on Jesus, shall not perish but come to, and, and, and not come to destruction but be lost but have eternal everlasting life. We have everlasting life. You believe? Say, I believe. I believe. Yes, sir. You've got eternal life. You'll never die. Man, do, see, it, you go out here and, and I tell some people that. They look at me like I'm crazy. I say, how long have you been a Christian? They don't even know they're Christian. I said, let's start from page one then. <laughs> I was talking to a man uh, today out there. He's 70 years old. And I, I looked at him. I, I said, you're looking, you know, you look pretty young. You must be about 60. He said, no, I'm 70. I said, well, you sure don't look it. I said, you know the Lord is your personal Savior? And he says, yes, I do. I said, well, if you die right now, where would you go? He says, I'd go straight to heaven. I said, you're right, and I'll give you the scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. What's going to be present with the Lord? Your spirit. Where's your body going? In the, in the grave, in, in the dust from which it came from. But one day it'll be resurrected. <clears throat> and we'll have a glorified bodies. You think I look good now? <clears throat> Man, you ain't seen nothing yet. Yes, sir. When I get that glorified body, that hair on my head, <laughs> I, I'll be riding that white horse. You know, when you go and you read Daniel, it talks about it's 483 years right to the exact date that Jesus rode in on the donkey into Jerusalem. 483 years. And guess what? When he comes back after the tribulation, he's going ride, to be riding into Jerusalem again. He's going to land right on Mount uh, Olive, but he's going to be on a white horse. And I'm going to be right behind him. On my white horse. And you will too. Can you imagine Jerusalem all surrounded by these nations? It looks like they're going to be overcome. Half of the city has been taken captive already. And the other Jews are there. And, 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 and the, the, the bums are going off. And fire everywhere. And it looks like we're surrounded. This, this is it. And all of a sudden, the sky <laughs> opens up. <laughs> all these white horses are coming down. And somebody says, it's Jesus, the Messiah! <laughs> Woo! He's coming to rescue us! <laughs> oh, yes, my dear saints, he's coming! He's coming back! And he's going to rule this world. And we're going to rule and reign with him. That's reality. That's reality. That's real. And I live every day in that reality that he's coming back. And he's going to take us up there and he's going to train us a little bit and teach us how to ride them wild white horses. And, and then we're going to come back with him. That eastern sky's going to split. Yes, sir. Oh, hallelujah. I ain't talking about the rapture. I'm talking about the second coming. We've already up there for seven years. Seven years of honeymoon with Jesus. Look at verse 17 now. Let's move on. I'm going to let you go early tonight, 12 o'clock. For God did not send the Son into the world in order to judge, to reject, to condemn, to pass sins on the world, but that the world might find salvation and be made safe and sound through Him. Done deal. He that has a Son has life. 
The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Nothing you, you have to do, to, you are free when you receive him. The law of the spirit in Christ, he's put us in Christ and that law is in him. And that law of the spirit in him has set us free right now, this moment we are free. <laughs> Period. Powerful. Look at verse 18. He who believes in him, who clings to, remember we're talking about belief. He that believes, ain't a shout of belief, and in a mental belief. It's a heart belief. If I will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart, and believeth in thy heart. Everybody say, believeth in thy heart, God. God then moves on our behalf, and we are saved. See, the heart's got to be in this thing. It cannot be all intellectual knowledge or intellectual um, consent. It's a heart belief. And look what it says. It's not judged. Who trusts in him never comes up for judgment. Why? Because he took the judgment for us. On the cross, he took the judgment. He was judged in our place. See, this thing is more than just having our sins forgiven. Well, we've been born again. Our inner man has been reborn, has been, is a new creature. We are new creatures in Christ. We're sons and daughters of the living God. There is no judgment. Now, we will have to give an account of our deeds and our works and why we did it when we stand at the judgment seat of Christ. But we're not judging with the world. Because we received Jesus as our Savior, and he bore our judgment, our condemnation, our guilt, our sins, and the old creature, the old Adam, was all placed on him. When he died, all that died. Now let's read that again. He who believes in him, that is in Christ, who clings to, trusts is in, relies on him, that's what we're talking about believing now, is not judged. He who trusts in him never comes up for judgment. For him there is, that is for us that have received Christ, for him there is no rejection. There's no rejection. No condemnation. He occurs no damnation. But he who does not believe, cleave to, rely on, trust in him, is judged already he has already been convicted and has already received his sentence because he has not believed in and trusted in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He is condemned for refusing to let his trust rest in Christ's name. Now, I need to catch that. You need to see that whole thing there. When God has handed pardon to everybody, he died for the world. And man refuses it. There's nothing more that God can do. And so therefore, the man that refuses to receive Christ, who died in his place, and refused to accept that redemption that's in Christ, he condemns his own self. People do it. God don't do it. When God has made a way for every human being to escape that damnation and laid everything on Jesus Christ and then men refused to accept what Christ did for them on that cross, there's nothing more that God can do. They bring it on their own selves because they love darkness more than light. And the Bible talks about that. So sad, for it is God's will that no man perish, but that all should come to repentance. 
If you get a chance, just follow that, that chapter and read it. Share a few other scriptures, then we'll, we'll close. But 1 Peter 5.10, and I want to really encourage you that this Thanksgiving to be thankful for everything that God has blessed us with, but above all, to thank God for the salvation that we have. The Hebrew writer says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Do not ever neglect it. The Hebrew people were doing that because they thought, well, you know, we're going to go back into Judaism. No, there's no going back. There's nothing back there. Christ, Christ, Jesus Christ is the only way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes to the Father except through me. You don't go, through the, you don't go to the Father through the church, through your daddy and your mama, the priest or the preacher, only through Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no woman can go to the Father except they go through Jesus. Charles preached a message not too long ago. If you have the Son, you have the Father. For the Son and the Father is one. Him and the Father, the Father in Him. He's in us and we're in Him. Powerful. What a salvation that God has given to us. Okay, here we go. And Peter's talking. He says, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who imparts all blessings and favor, who has called you to his own eternal glory in Christ. God has called us all into his eternal glory in Christ Jesus will himself complete and make you what you are to be, establish and ground you securely and strengthen and settle you. That's why as we walk this life down here, our faith is not in our works and what we can do or can't do. It's in his power. The power is not of the vessel. It is of God. And that power, the power of the Holy Ghost is working in every one of us right now, doing a work in us, sanctifying us, not for eternal salvation, but to bring us into the very image of the Son of the living God. That's what God wants. He's working. Someone says, I'm working. Stop working. Let God work in you. Amen. Philippians 1, 6. For it is God working in us, in us, making us willing to do his good pleasure. You know, there's times we don't want to do his good pleasure. But you say, oh, Lord, work in me. Now, let me tell you something. I've lived long enough to tell you this. I don't struggle at certain things anymore. Everything you ever struggle with, I have struggled with it. Oh, I've struggled with everything except women and, and lying. <laughs> now, I got you. Some of you was going to sleep on me. I thought I'd wake you up a little bit there. I've struggled with everything. Alcohols, cussing, smoking, pornography, mahogany. mahogany. <laughs> but see, I'm free now. And I can't say I set myself free. God did the work in me. He just takes that want to out. I, I want to say it again. He'll take the want to to go the world's way out of you. And it will be garbage. It will be dunk, as Paul says. It will be ick. That's it. It will be horrible <laughs> to you now. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. He's been given to us to conform us into the image of the Son of the living God. So have faith in the Holy Spirit. He is doing that. Whatever you're struggling with, you just talk with God and say, Lord, I know I want, I want to do that, and you want me to do that, and I want to do that. Lord, do, do that work in me. And after a while, it may take three or four weeks, may, might my it might be just like that. Sometimes I've had deliverance just like that. Other times I've sweated. I've fasted. I, 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 and I had to quit. I, 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 and just let him do the work. <laughs> See, God is not dead. Church, he's alive. Yeah. He's on the earth right now living in you, living in me. He is not dead. My Lord and my Savior is alive. His spirit lives in us. We are the 
temple of God. Amen. Of the living God. Amen. And quit taking all that bull off the devil. Tell him to go to. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> Because that's where he's going to end up eventually. I read the book. It's over there in Revelation. God is for us. We got a good season ahead of us. And we're going to go out there and we're going to tell people that God so loved, so loved, so loved. Now notice this. Jesus will himself. Now we know that he's in his resurrected body. Seated at the right hand side of the Father. But Christ lives in us by the Holy Spirit. Notice, Jesus will himself complete and make you, say make me, what I are to be. Man, let's get that revelation. It's, it, who saves you to start with? Jesus. Who's going to sanctify you? Jesus. He's going to do the work. Look at the word of the living God. Look at it. What you are to be established and ground you securely and strengthen and settle you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's where our faith is to go and say, Lord, you said you're going to do it, and I thank you. You're doing it right now. I love it. Boy, to be free from some of those things. My goodness. Amen. Now, if you're not there yet, I'm here to encourage you that Jesus will do it. You, you write that scripture down. You nail it on the wall. One more scripture, and then we're going to close. I'm going to let you go early because I know some of you are hungry. That might be me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Philippians 1 6. <laughs> Philippians 1 6. All right, look at him. And I am convinced that Paul's talking and sure of this very thing. What, Paul? What are you so sure about, Paul? That he, who, who's he? Jesus, who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his return, which is the rapture developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. Amen. Who will do it? Jesus. You will. Now he tells what our part is. Walk with him. Walk in the light as he is in the light. And the blood of Jesus Christ will clean you from all sin. Yeah, we know he tells us to study, to read the word of God, but he does the work. And see, that particular thing, you may have anger, you may have, you may have resentment, you may have bitterness, you may have, I don't care what you got inside of you, God will take it out. God will complete. God will perfect. God will deliver you. Whatever you got inside. Okay? You talk to God. You talk to the, you just say, Holy Spirit, do your work. Thank you, Lord. You're going to do your work. Okay, now, let's turn to... Uh, Second Corinthians 4.18. Second Corinthians 4.18. When I learned these truths, I was the most struggling. I fasted days. I cried. I've wept. I've kicked the chairs. I've, you name it like some of you guys have done. It, it's not done that way. Your faith must be in him to do it. He said he would. He'll keep his promise. Now keep, quit kicking yourself and, and putting yourself down and put your faith in him. Rely on him. Cleave to him that he's doing that work in you. He may cause you to face some issues. That's all right. He'll be with you. He'll study you. you face him. There's no struggle. You know why there's no struggle? Because it ain't inside of you anymore. Uh, anybody hear me, what I just said? It's just not in you no more. I don't even care to watch the funny books anymore. How about those Playboy magazines? I got victory. I don't buy them and I don't look at them. 
I have no desire for them. But I do have one left. I think I should confess it to you. No, I do not. I think I'll just put that to one side right now. <laughs> look, let's see. Since we consider and look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. So you can't see all that's going on inside of you. How many of you know when you eat food, do, 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 you, do, do you hear anything going on inside of you? I mean, your, your body is digesting that food and you don't even know it. I mean, you understand what I'm talking about? You eat this steak and this banana pudding, Justine's cake. You don't see all that's going inside of your stomach, and, 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 and God has fixed it where the, the, the minerals and the, all the other goodies that's in all that food that goes into your bloodstream and throughout your body and gives you strength and, 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 and all. And you, you don't even know it's doing it. Your faith is in the Holy Spirit. He's working in you. You're not even aware of it, but yet you, you bring it to your conscious mind. Lord, thank you. You're working in me. I give you praise for working in me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, taking that desire out of me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When I was getting the victory over cigarettes, I quit buying them. But then I had a buddy that smoked. Uh, we'd we'd uh, worked on airplanes, and we had to go out, way over out. They had a regular area out there where you could smoke cigarettes, and you could tell you could tell it because it's like a big cloud, <laughs> a cloud by day and a fire by night. <laughs> yeah. But see, I, I I don't buy no cigarettes, so I go out and I get in that cloud. <laughs> Well, I ain't smoking. That, sec that secondhand smoke is bad on you. And I would bum the cigarettes off of my buddy, and after a while, he said, man, that's it. You ain't going to get no more cigarettes out of me. No way. I said, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but one day, I had no desire. God's not dead. He's alive, God's not dead. He's alive, God's not dead. He's alive, ha, 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 ha. Oh, that was a marker. Put that on the board. One by one, they came down, came down, came down. I, um, This guy over there lives in the apartments, has this dog. He's about this tall. This dog is, he looks like a bear, really. <laughs> and uh, I believe he could drag you across the lawn. <laughs> and um, I go, I'm walking out to the mailbox, and this dog comes out behind the azalea bush. <laughs> right at me. And boy, I cursed that dog out left and right. I <laughs> No, let me tell you that. Years back, that's what would have happened. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. See, see, it's just not there no more. Whoop, it's just not there no more. But I hollered to the, the, the owner. I said, would you keep your dog uh, back a little bit for me? And I, I raised my voice a little bit. And you know what? The Holy Spirit didn't let me off the hook. I said, Lord, I, I know what I got to do. So I said, in your timing, I'll do it. Two days passed by, and he come, he's out there on my property. And this dog leaves a little. He likes my property. He puts, um, I told you it wasn't for sale. <laughs> but he keeps putting put deposits down. And I said, <laughs> it is not for sale. How many love me tonight? <laughs> Half of you, okay. <laughs> wow. 
So I came up to him. I says, I, I, I want to I apologize to you. I, I, I knew I must have raised my voice a little high because the dog really scared me bad. I mean, he come out from Isaiah. He looked, I mean, really, he looked like a bear, man. <laughs> and I left him assorted the house. <clears throat> but I apologized to the guy, you know. But see, that's something I knew I had to do inside. So, so you just know that certain things you, you, you have to do, and, and, and you're not going to get your peace until you do it. You understand what I'm talking about? And you see, it's hard sometimes to apologize. But see, your peace with God is more precious than anything in the world. Your relationship with God, it doesn't matter what people think anymore. You know, with the, and I'm not, not making no excuses, but with this hearing thing I have, and, and I may be talking loud. Am I talking loud? Huh? Okay, I'm not talking loud. Good. But I feel like I'm really blasting you people. And I, I, but, I, but that's, see, it's a, it's a whole new thing I have to overcome. And sometimes I'm, I'm talking to Susan. I said, honey, I'm, I'm not fussing, Emma. She, I mean, am I, am I too loud here, you know? How many of you understand what I'm talking about? It, it's, there's an adjustment there that I have to make. And, um, but anyway, I, I, I burst it out a little loud. But I know what I have to do. But see, God's not dead. He's alive in me, and, and I can do nothing. And if he corrects, I thank him for it. I thank him for it. He knew it already. But see, that's how you grow. That's how you mature. Sometimes your husband might yell at you. I got this baseball bat if you want to borrow it. But, I'm just kidding, just to keep somebody hears this tape. But but see, it's 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 learning to to apologize. It's learning to forgive. It's learning to forgive yourself. It's learning to to let uh, the the word of God have its free course in your heart in your life. See, the meditation of my heart. See, it, 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 you can do everything right, but where's your heart at? How clean is your heart? See, God looks at the heart. God looks at all our hearts, and he's doing a purifying work in us because when the Spirit is being poured out, he's going to be looking for folks that has had a work done in their heart, in their heart. And it won't be in your heart to harm nobody. It won't be in your heart to talk about anybody. It won't be in your heart to be mean to anybody. It, 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 in fact, I, you got to watch yourself because you just about give everything you got away. That's how free you get. Sometimes I have to put a chain on Susan. She'll give the house away. <laughs> she is so generous. And then when I'm generous, she could, well, come back here, honey. <laughs> See, she has so much money she can give away or spend it like she wants to. I have so much money, I can I either give it away or, or uh, buy a Dairy Queen hamburger and ice cream. I can spend it like I want. Isn't that wonderful to have enough money to do that? You know, so a little bit of money that I have is for me and a little money for her, she is for her. The other day she went shopping with the girls, which was a bad sign right off. I knew that. <laughs> Boy, them girl can shop, I tell you. <laughs> Leave the store. Don't buy the store. Leave the store. <laughs> but she, she, she bought some sweaters and things she wanted and everything. And I remember years ago, I'd have foamed at the mouth. How many still there? One, two, three, four. <laughs> But see, I'm glad that she did it. It was wonderful. She works hard. She's conservative. She's free. And she bought three beautiful sweaters. And, and that, that, you know, I don't care nothing about sweaters unless it's cold. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you know what I'm talking about, it's okay if you do it, but somebody else does it, you know, it's like... But see, God does that work in us. She's free to let me be free. I'm free to let her be free. And we balance each other. We're both sober. We, we handle our money correctly and all. So if she wants to give herself some money and buy some, that's fine. Today I spent $48. I needed a new battery for my lawnmower. 
I didn't have to go in and say, honey, can I buy a new lawnmower for my battery? I mean, my new battery for my lawnmower. <laughs> See, if I'd have said that right, you would have laughed. <laughs> but it was so, and I give God the glory. Because how, how's everything inside of you tonight? I want to encourage you. Remember, you're open. God sees everything. Just be open. Tell him. Tell him everything. Lord, I need you to work in that area. I need you to work in this area. He'll not condemn you. Because see, the con Jesus already cared all that at, cross, at the cross. We're free for God to mold us and to make us. Yes, we make our mistakes. He's made provisions. He's a good God. And listen, it's not just for now, but it's for eternity. God knows what he's doing. And he's going to have sons and daughters in the future. This thing is down here. It's just a little short time. Paul says it's a passing hour. J uh, J James says it's a vapor down here. So we only have a little bit of time for God now to do that work in us to bring us into the image. And so whatever he uses or whoever he uses, just say, Lord, thank you. Just humble yourself. How many of you know God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud? Okay, let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for the word of God tonight that you are moving in the hearts of your people. And we thank you. There will be those that will turn us off. That's okay. They can't escape God. They can escape me, but they can't escape God. And, Lord, just continue to do your work in all of us. And let us put our faith in you that you are doing what you said you are doing. And we just want to thank you now. And all of God's people said, Amen.